Verify license headers exist in source files using a Jenkins pipeline. When you start out developing a brand new application, it's pretty simple to go ahead and include license headers as you're going through. But what do you do when you need to add license headers to an existing project? You can use an open source project named Add License to make that quick and simple. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.375.2. .2. For this video, there is a sample repository and the link to that sample repository is down in the description. Also down in the description is a link to Add License. If we take a look at an Add License, it is an unofficial open source project from Google. And what we can see here is that it ensures source code files have copyright license headers by scanning directory patterns recursively. So what does that mean for us? Well, if we take a look at our sample repository, we have a basic Spring Boot application. And within source main, we have a number of Java files that currently do not have any sort of license header information. So what we can do is if we take a look back at add license, we can see that we can check. And within our Jenkins files, that's primarily what we're going to be doing is we're going to be checking to see if the files have header information or not. If they don't, then what's going to happen is add license will return a status code of one. And as we're running the add license binary, when it returns that status code of one, then our Jenkins job is going to fail because of that status code being one instead of zero. So let's go ahead and go into our controller and let's click on add license open source because that's the branch that we're going to be working on right now and click on build now. And what we can see as it's running is it finds the files, it runs an add license check, and then we get back an exit code of one. Now, if we take a look at our Jenkins file, what we're going to see is we see add license dash check, and then we're doing a find type F name star dot Java. The reason why we're doing it this way is right now my agent is a Linux based agent. If my agent was either Windows or if it were Mac OS, then I could have said add license dash check star star slash star dot Java. And at that point, those files would have been matched as well. It's just that with Linux, I cannot do the star star slash star dot Java. So this is a bit of a workaround, but the end result is the same. So let's go into our project inside of VS Code and let's go ahead and run the commands that we want to do. Now we're on a branch that's named open source. And what we want to do is we want to include an open source license header in each of our Java files. Now we could go ahead and include other files, but we only are concerned about adding the copyright and license header information to our Java files. If we take a look back at add license, we can see that we can add the copyright holder. By default, it's going to be Google. So we're going to override that. We're going to add the license type. In our case, we're going to be using MIT. We're going to also include the SPDX identifier. And then we could also include the copyright year, but since we're creating it right now, I'm okay with the default being the current year. So let's go back over to VS Code and let's set up our line, add license dash L MIT. That will add the MIT license header information. We're saying dash S equal to true. That way we get our SPDX information. Our dash C, we're specifying the company name. We're not specifying a copyright year because we're just gonna use the default. And we're going to apply it to all of our Java files within this project. Now, locally, I'm running Mac OS, so this star star is going to work. So let's go ahead and hit enter. It returns back. If we take a look at our differences, we can see there were five files changed. These five files are all star.java. So if we take a look at application, we can see that we added in the copyright 2023 My Company Inc. Here's our MIT license. And then we can also see the SPDX information for MIT. If we were to take a look at the other four files, all this information would be the same. So let's go ahead and commit these files. So we'll say add license headers. We'll sync those up and then let's go back over to our controller and let's run this job one more time. And what we'll see when it runs this time is we saw a green check and we can see at the end after it runs add license check, we see that it finished successfully, which means that it found that none of the Java files were missing our license headers. Now add license also gives you the ability to define your own license information in case you're not wanting to use one of the included ones. If we take a look at the content for add license, what we see here is if we pass in a file, a dash F, and we give it a license file, it will take that content and add it to each of the headers. Let's go ahead and change over in our VS Code to add license custom. And if we click back into the source, we see a file here named custom-license.txt. 
And in this case, this is going to be the content that's added as our license headers. Notice that we're specifying all of the information for this custom license. So if you're using dash F, you're not gonna be using the dash C or the dash S or any of the other options. By using dash F, it assumes that everything that's going to be inserted is going to be in this file. But you will notice one thing. Notice there are no comments in this file. That's because add license works with many different source files. So the commenting structures can be different as you move from Java to go to many other different languages. So all you have to do is provide a plain text file and add license will take care of the proper commenting for each of those files. So just to prove out what state we're in right now, if we take a look at application Java, there is no license information at the head. If we go ahead and go back over to our controller, let's go run our add license custom and we should expect this job to fail because again, we don't have any information in these headers. And again, we can see that it did fail. Let's go ahead and go back over to VS Code and let's run add license dash F. We're gonna pass in our custom license text file. Again, you can name that file, whatever you want. And then we're gonna apply it anywhere we find a Java file. So we'll hit enter. If you take a look right now in line with application Java, we can see that this license header was inserted into application.java. It was properly commented based on the Java language. And that applies also to all the other files that were in this branch. Let's go ahead and stage these up and let's commit them with add license headers. We'll sync it up. And if we go ahead and go back into add license custom, run it one more time, what we'll see here is that build number four is going to pass successfully because every one of the Java files within this project now has a valid license header. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.